check. <laughs> Builders Brothers YouTube. YouTube. <laughs>Welcome to the Perkins Builder Brothers channel. I'm Eric Perkins. On this episode, I'm gonna tell you all of the building codes that you need to know to build a set of stairs. Stairs have a lot of codes in the code book, and that's for safety. If you build a set of stairs that does not pass code, then someone falls down them and gets injured or killed, you could get sued. So this is important. Today we're using this, the 2018 version of the Residential Code Book for North Carolina. International Code Council. This is about a $200 book. Anybody can buy this, by the way. You don't have to be a contractor to buy this. About 200 bucks. I'm gonna tell you about the stairs for free. All right, I'm gonna kick it off by talking about the most common mistake ever made when framing stairs, and that's forgetting that your stair figuring goes from finished surface to finished surface. You have to figure in the material thickness that's gonna be added later to the top and the bottom of the stairs so that your first step and your last step are the same height as the rest of your steps in between. Now the one weird material when you're talking about this is carpet. The building code book says that carpet is zero inches for some reason. We all know that in reality, carpet is like a quarter inch to a half inch thick. That's just what it says. All right, code number one, the width of your stairs. The width of your stairs by code has to be 36 inches wide from finished material to finished material up to the minimum height of six foot eight, okay? So you have to frame your stairs wider than that so that you have room for your finished material on each side. I'd say 37 inches minimum on the framing. We like to go about 40 if we can. Now the handrail is allowed to protrude into that space four and a quarter inches maximum. And there is one weird exception here is that if your stairs are not needed for egress, that means they're not needed as an exit, you can go as little as 26 inches. Now I've never done this. And I wouldn't really recommend it, but if you just had to get to a basement or something like that that had its own egress down there, you could go with that narrower 26 inch width. Code number two, the height of your stairwell is a minimum of six foot eight. And that's measured from the line that connects the nosings down your stairs, not from the flat part of your step. So that's important. Code number two, six foot eight from the line that connects your nosings. Okay, we're on to code number three, the maximum vertical rise you can have on one flight of stairs from this level to this level, 147 inches from finished material to finished material, remember that. If it's more than that, you have to have a landing somewhere to break up the stair run so that if you fall, you're not just tumbling and tumbling and tumbling forever. That's why they do that. All right, code number four, the maximum rise you can have per step by code is eight and one quarter inches. And you have to keep that about the same on each step. That's a code as well. You can't vary that riser height more than three eighths of an inch in your run of steps. There is one exception and that's the top and bottom steps. The code allows for three quarters of an inch variance on those two steps, but that's just the top and bottom steps. And don't do that if it's possible because that's enough where it feels funny where you're going up and down, you might trip. All right, code number five involves the width of the treads, the walking surface, and that's a minimum of nine inches where you put your foot. And this is important. That's not measured from the back of the riser to the nosing. That is measured from the nosing of the stair above to the nosing of the stair below, which could change it by an inch or so because most stairs have nosings. All right, and your treads, just like your risers, have a maximum variance of three eighths of an inch in your run of steps. All right, so those two codes give you the maximum rise in the minimum run. We usually try to frame our stairs with about a seven to a seven and a half inch rise and almost always a 10 inch run for the tread. And that number, if you add them up, 10 and seven is 17 inches. And that's kind of a magic ratio when it comes to stairs as far as it walking comfortably. So if you go for a wider tread, you would wanna go for less of a rise so that the numbers add up to 17 inches. And like I said, that's just kind of a magical number, 17 inches, add the rise and the run together and it will be comfortable when you walk on them. We're over halfway done. Code number six, 
involves the nosing or the overhang on the treads. If you have treads that are less than 11 inches wide or deep, let's call it, you have to have a nosing that sticks out over your riser. Code says that your nosing has to be between three quarters to one inch and one quarter. Anywhere in there passes code, but you have to have one if your tread's less than 11 inches. There's also a code about the roundness of the front of your nosing. It can't be more than a 9 16 radius on any of the nosings. And again, with the nosings, same thing, 3 8 variance is the maximum limit on the variance of the depth of your nosings and one run of stairs. Wow, that was a mouthful. Code number seven has to do with how flat your treads are. They're supposed to be dead flat, okay? But the code does allow for up to a 2% slope on your steps. Now, 2% is different than degrees. That's about one degree or 1.1 degrees is all you're allowed for the slope of your step, and that's not much. All right, code number eight, and this is getting to be a long video, so hang in there. Landings, okay, you need to know about landings. If you're building stairs outside, you have to have a landing at the top and the bottom, and the bottom could just be the ground. The landing size has to be the width of the stairs, okay, and it has to be at least 36 inches deep in the direction you're traveling on the stairs. Now there's exceptions, and this is for stairs inside. You don't have to have any landing on interior stairs, in the case that you don't have a door swinging out over the stairs. So like from a garage, you could have steps going up to a door as long as the door swings in away from the stairs. Okay, code number nine, winder stairs. Gosh, you don't wanna end up building winder stairs, but that's what we're doing right now. They're a great way to get out of a headroom situation if you need to get up quickly. So we're doing that. So codes for winders, there's a lot of these that don't pass code mainly because the point of the winders goes to a point and that doesn't pass code by code. The minimum width of your tread, any place on the tread, which on the inside would be the smallest, is four inches, okay? So you have to do a wider radius on these winders to make them pass code. And the other thing is that in the walk path, okay, which is like a foot out from the handrail, these treads have to be within three eighths of an inch width on all of the winders that you do, okay? And they also have to be more than nine inches deep on the tread in the walk path. So that's a lot of different codes. If you're gonna do winders, you might wanna spend the 200 bucks and get the code book, because they're a little more complicated, but they are very handy in certain situations. Okay, stair code number 10, we made it up top. All right, so number 10 has to do with having solid risers on your stairs. We live in the mountains, so we get a lot of requests to build stairs with open risers, nothing between the treads and like log treads. And the code on that is the same as railings. You can't fit any more than a four inch ball anywhere through your riser if your stairs are more than 30 inches high. Okay, if your stairs are less than 30 inches high, you can have completely open risers, but otherwise you have to have solid risers or no more than four inches anywhere in between the treads that you could fit something through. And that's so your leg doesn't like go through there if you slip while you're walking up the stairs or a baby's head can't go in there, I guess is the main thing. Okay, that was a lot of information. My mind is blown. The only other codes that I know that I'm not gonna tell you, buy a code book if you need this information, is about if you have curved fronts on your risers and things like that. If you're gonna build really, really fancy steps like that, buy a code book. I don't even know that because we don't do that kind of stuff. So that's it. You made it through this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Remember to subscribe to our channel, Perkins Builder Brothers. Uh, if you click the bell, you'll even get our future videos. Thanks for watching. I hope you build some awesome steps.